Greetings and welcome to episode 320 of Aussie Tech Heads. This is Thursday the 13th of December 2012 and look, probably like most people, I don't know, I had a, I had a problem, I had a technical problem yesterday on the 12th of the 12th, 12, but I'll tell you about that later on. Now uh, we've got another big show for you this week and we've got lots of news and uh, stories to get through and to help us get through we've got the usual panel. Oh, and that consists of Eric, Will, and Shane. So we'll go through and see how Eric's week's been. How's your week been, Eric? My week's been very good. Thank you, Glenn. Good. Yours? Uh, yes, yes, equally yes. well, or maybe a couple of frustrating days, but <laughs> but that's a that's oh. another story. But um, <laughs> no, that's all right. You get those. You get those. You you have to talk to your wife about that. Yes. <laughs> oh, look, I've, I've spoken to her, and uh, yeah, so we're going to push through. Now, now so ironically, when he got into trouble, he, he called me. I was the first person he rang. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so Will knows all about it. And we'll just say, hey, Will, and we better just say hello to Shane because I think we're just already starting to talk about stuff. Hi, Shane. Hey, how are we, guys? Yeah, good thanks, good thanks. Look, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I'll tell you now what what happened. I had a couple of I had a couple of hard days with a little job that I was doing, and then I finally finished the job. And I was gonna. This is uh, the twelfth of twelfth, so that was yesterday. Getting ready to take the uh, the machine back to the to the lady. Jumped in the car, flat battery. I haven't had a flat battery for years. So anyway, what, in, in your in your car, in the car, in the car. <laughs> and what I think has happened. Was I came, I went out the night before, and the interior light was on, and I thought oh, I didn't shut the door properly. Uh, so anyway, so I pushed the door closed, but it's only been on for four hours, you know. And oh, well, that that's enough. Yeah, well, it must must be obviously because the battery's probably not as as good as it probably should be, and we'll we'll tell you that um, it's it's a what is it? Will a factory second hand or something just to get you going when you buy the cars? But, um, no, well, that's the original battery the car came with. So what year is it? Two thousand and eight. Five. So that's all. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> They'll do what you reckon. So you've got seven years out of a, out of a battery that's supposed to last three. Yeah, I think it's about time you change it. <laughs> anyway, I, I I didn't heed anyone's advice. I didn't heed the RACQ, and I haven't heeded Will's advice yet. So um, RACQ hmm. told me to go and charge it, buy a charger and charge it. Didn't do it. And he said also go and get a. And Will said go and get a new battery. Haven't done it. So let's see if the car will start tomorrow. Hopefully it will, because I've got to take the kids to school. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, all right. Yeah, so I couldn't believe it. So anyway, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. That was, that was my little issue with the, the 12th of the 12th. The world didn't end. We're still here. Nibiru hasn't smashed us to smithereens. So um, we all had any dramas yesterday with you, Nibirus, or anything like that? No, no more than usual. Right. Anyone, anyone here have a, have a Nibiru problem? Uh, no. Eric, no, everyone's good. All right, well, let's, no. let's get out of the bureaus. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Aussie Tech Heads, yeah, hosting. We do hosting, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. If you've got a, a business or you just want a personal blog, just uh, get a, jump onto the site and get some personal free or personal fast and uh, free installation of many programs, over 250 programs that you can install, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, whatever you want, get you up and started at the flick of a switch. So it's uh, free, uh, affordable, fast Australian hosting. So that's, that's uh, good stuff. Now, uh, also, now you might have noticed just for the live viewers today, tonight, Tech Webcast, there was a technical hitch. Uh, it wasn't... Uh, screened before the start of the show so we apologize for that but anyway you can see tech webcast or if you want to listen to it techwebcast.info they do have a video version on the youtube if you want to go and check that out but just go to itunes and then search for it and you'll be away and uh welcome to the lounge the lounge is here every thursday without fail and they sit at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live and they sit around they ponder and they talk to each other and you know they they play footsies and all that sort of stuff and they chat in the chat room which is a good which is good because that's what we encourage now also what we're going to encourage is now i think will we're going to talk about zello can you do you want to talk about that we can do that all right now i think you've set up a aussie tech head room is that right yep the hang on Sorry, my audio is audio. crapping out. All right, so what we'll do, we'll come back to Zello. We'll, we'll do Zello a little bit later on. So we'll start off with a story. How about, has everyone seen uh, Kogan is entering into the, the mobile space? Now, Kogan this week launched prepaid mobile services, but no wholesale providers have been willing to come forward. There's conflicting stories. Huh. <laughs> Gee, what a surprise. But there's conflicting stories. He's probably lying through his teeth again. He's probably lying through 
his teeth. But I don't know. You check He's out just the a publicity hound, this bloke. <laughs> he is. I give this guy 12 months before he goes under. Oh, I think he's, he's got too much money. I don't think he'll go under. Do you reckon? No, he hasn't. No, that's perception, mate. Alan, everyone thought Alan Bond was rolling in it too. Mm. It, was yeah. all, it was all smoke and mirrors. He was just rolling around. But uh, but uh, but anyway, to Co- but you look on his website. Like the two two stor- stories here. One story you read for in one article, and no one wants to associate with him. You know, he's saying he's got these Telstra plans ready to go, and you go on the web page, and yeah, buy the Sims, go for your life. You know, blah blah blah, ready to go. But then um, you you, uh, you talk to someone, you, you read another article, and uh, it's uh, all it's all straightforward. Now look, I've just got a couple of notes here that I pulled from this story. So uh, Telstra's apparently, uh, distanced themselves. Kogan's declined to comment. Telstra wholesaler, ISP1, is currently the only Telstra reseller to offer Australia, Australian prepaid 3G services, and, and they've declined to comment. Kogan's prepaid plans, which are pretty attractive uh, price-wise, start from $29 to $299 for up to a year, with unlimited calls, SMS, and 6 gig of data per month. So that's not too bad. Now, um, Got to be Optus. At those rates, it'd have to be Optus. Well, yeah, that's what you would think. But then there's there's, there's updates and, and different – depends on which, which article you read. So now um, – because you look on his site, it's just so elaborate. It's so detailed. It's just uh, – you think, well, this has to be true. Like It's, it's just so no. – it's, it's done. You can buy them now. But anyway – this other article says that it's all it's all going ahead. The new network will use Telstra's wholesale three G network, which is capped below the regular speeds of the next G network. So apparently, yeah, yeah. So it covers so two point five two point five G, just over edge speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not fast. Look, it's not fast. And apparently, this is what the the wholesale and three G dudes uh, sell. So it it's uh, where is it? Um, so the download typical download speeds of five hundred fifty k. Yeah, that's that's like, crap. That's at, edge. That's not even. That's yeah. not even two point five. That's edge. So that's between five fifty and, and three meg. So that's the same as like what you get on your Optus and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, typical next G download speeds, which is what that's Telstra's prime, prime. Yeah. One under uh, the LTE. Yeah. Yeah, have uh, range from a faster one point one to twenty megs and cover. Well, that's yeah. Not, I get that's um, not LTE. I, that's the. I get about I get about seventeen on the on the Telstra next G. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm. It's, when you get to the LTE, that's when you start flipping right out. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's fast. So, you've got. Have you got the LTE at your area at home? Like in your not at home, no, no. So, but I get at home here because um, I've got a lot of trees around here. I get about eight, which is not bad. If I, if I go step out and go out in the open in on a, in a park or something, gets gets about between fourteen to seventeen. Mm. But if and if I drive about if I drive about 10 minutes from here, I get the big 50, 50 up, 50 down. Yeah, right. That's massive, isn't it? That's massive. So, mm. um, yeah. So, so look, so apparently you can get on the Kogan. You can go and buy these things now. So, but anyway, you've got to look at the speeds, eh? Like, if you're not going to get a, a fair enough speed out of them, why, why bother? But the, the, plan, the point, yeah. The plans are attractive, you know? Like, I think they, they've also got on offer here. Oh, here we go. There's a plan, $9.99 per month with a, for a two gig uh, data plan only. Yeah, so, that's that's got to be Optus because that's what TPG have the same plan and they use Optus exactly the same. Nine mm. ninety nine, two gig. Mm. You know, when you read all the, you can eat that sort of stuff. When you when you read the Telstra, I mean the Kogan website, it, it says in a couple of areas it it says uh, we use part of Telstra's network. So yeah, we're not, which means they're piggybacking from Optus onto the Telstra. Some of the Telstra, um, what do you call it? Sell sites. Oh, okay, yeah. So they're, they're piggyback because they share. They share. They they share sites. Hmm. There's only one real fast way of getting stuff, and that's through the Telstra Premium Network. So yeah, um, yeah I'm happy with yeah, baby. I'm happy with my stuff. Look, I've got the um, I've got the three. I've got in my drawer, but I've got the three G dongle. You know, and I'm 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 happy with that. But I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna let it go. It's forty bucks a month. I'm gonna let it go because the, the tethering on the phone is just so good. It's, it's so it is. Good. If you can get LTE pretty much anywhere, um, you're better off. It's be cheaper, and you'd be better off just adding, you know, an extra ten dollars to your month a month to your phone plan and getting an extra gig. Yes. You know, you're better off doing that yeah, right. than paying forty dollars a month for three G. Yep. Now, um, so that's the, that's the, that's marks the end of that story. Now, as we were doing last week, uh, Shane was giving us a, a sort of like a what's happened on this day in tech over time. So you got some more for us this week. What's happened this week 
in the in the years gone by. Uh, Chuck, yeah, Chana. I have. Um, I've actually got a selection this time rather than just one. All right. All right. So we'll, we'll work from today backwards. Uh, December twelfth, uh, eighteen ninety six. Marconi Demos Radio Demos Radio. Uh, December 12, 1901, Marconi transmits across the Atlantic. So obviously the same bloke um, invented the radio and then transmitted across the Atlantic. Is, is there, is there Coincidentally, con- the same day. Is there conjecture about who actually invented the radio? Because I heard, oh, I thought it was no. Marconi, but then I heard that he might not have been the first. So, uh, um, look, he was probably pretty close to being the first. Yeah, it was a long time ago. He's close enough. Good enough. <laughs> exactly. right. Sorry, keep going, Shane. Uh, a little bit um, kind of more recent and something that we're probably more familiar with. The neon light was invented on December 11 in 1910. 1910? Uh, yeah, apparently. When was electricity invented? Uh, a bit before that. Well, it must have been. 1800, <laughs> late 1800s. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Who did the electricity? Was that... Um... Wasn't that Edison or somebody? Tesla, wasn't it? Or is he the electric motor? Yeah, I don't know. Some dude. Was it uh, Edison? No, Edison Stevenson um, used electricity to make the light bulb. Yes. Oh, okay, but he didn't invent it. But anyway, neon lights in 1910. Yeah, right. They've been with us for a while. Fish and chip shops. Fish and chips. Yeah. yeah. Fish and chips. Okay, so uh, December 10, 1944, web visionary passes into obscurity. Uh, uh, this one I'll read a bit more because the. the kind of title doesn't really tell you much. Uh, 1944, his dream of global interlinked web of documents uh, lying in ruins, information science pioneer Paul Otlet dies. Um, I've never heard of this guy until obviously I've stumbled across this story. Never heard of him either. Um, usually when you talk about web, you hear about Tim Berners-Lee and um, you know, guys like that. Hmm. But anyway, I will move on. That was a long time ago. Yep. Uh, yeah. And uh, for some reason, nothing happened on December 9 or December 8. December 7, 1999, the RIAA sues Napster. Oh, I remember Napster. I remember yeah. jumping on Napster, downloading me stuff, and yeah, it was all, it was all the rage, wasn't it? <laughs> and then it, it was. was yeah. I think it becomes synonymous with uh, with pirating MP3s and downloading. Yeah, MP3s. it becomes synonymous with with crime and stealing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But it's still going, not in its original. form. Yeah, but form. in the legal legal form. Yeah. Legal form. Now. But didn't the didn't the studios just buy them out or something, and said, "Well, we'll just buy." Yeah, some, something. They couldn't be. They thought, "Oh well, we've got to. We'll go legit and we'll compete with Apple." Yeah, good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nineteen what eighteen fifty. 1850, the eyes have it, thanks to the off the phomoscope. That would be an off, oh, I can say that in my brain. It's, uh, I don't know, off, off, off. Oh, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> Who knows what happened? It, it's, it's, a, it's an off the phomoscope. you dumb bastards. What is it? An ophthalmoscope? What does yes. it do? It's a, it's a surgical device. And these days you have ophthalmic surgeons. Yeah, right. So it's like an eye thing? It's an eye. Yeah. Well, that's what it says. The <laughs> eyes have it. So it would, well, it's not an ear thing, is it? No, no. that's true. All right. And I think uh, we've got Will back. He's, he's joined us. You, you're back on deck, Will? <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> sort of, kind of. My sound card actually literally just caught on fire. It caught on fire? <laughs> In your computer, well, you, literally, literally, you're just actually, dealing in just you're just dealing in high end equipment there, Will. That's I love it. It so, was a hundred. It was a hundred dollar sound card. Well, there you go. So in the computer, I say was in the know. computer that you're using now. It caught on fire. It was a firewire, a firewire um, sound compressor. Right, right, and uh, yeah, it, it's no longer compressing. <laughs> Okay. Now, look, through the week, um, I had an email from Steve. Now, Steve comes from Thailand, listens to the show just about every week, and he sent us one he said we might get a laugh out of. So this is past and future of popular logos. Now, I've loaded, 
Now, I've loaded this up. Sorry. <laughs> so I've loaded it up. And um, I don't know if you can have a look at this. I think you, the guys on the stream can see me live. So we'll have a look at this. This is the past and future. This It's a, um, yeah, it's not, it's not true, but it's just someone having a bit of fun. Now, look, there's some Apple ones. I'm sorry for the people on the podcast. No, they're, the they're, they're true. That app, they're, they're Apple ones. They're, that, they're fit income. Yeah, but then into the future. Oh, okay. into the future, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So there, there's some funny ones there. Uh, look, if, if you're on the audio, just go grab the show notes at aussietechs.com.au after you listen to us and get the link and you can have a look at these. Now, there's uh, some Kentucky Fried Chickens. <laughs> What's it got? KFB. I don't know what that would mean. So what happens, it's got uh, KFC logo 1952, then the, the logo for 78, the logo for 91, the logo for 2010, and they've, they've um, imagined... What's KFB stand yeah, for? What's beast? And they've... they've um, Broccoli. Imagine. What's KFB? Oh, broccoli. It is. It is. And they've, they've, um, broccoli. Ooh, echo. Shh. Yeah, don't mind me. Why? Why broccoli? I thought it might have been his brain. His brains. No, look. It looks like a broccoli. That is broccoli. You're right. Mm. So anyway, Thank you, Shane. there's a couple of there's a couple of other ones. Uh, there's Ford and Sun. Uh, there's there's a funny one there. The IE Internet Explorer. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. funny one. Uh, any any Netscape ones? I oh, know. We'll go. We'll go down. <laughs> IBM. That might be around in the future. Coca-Cola, they haven't changed. They might, they might, they might come back. <laughs> Coca-Cola hasn't changed, no. Xerox, Microsoft, yeah, yeah. Uh, LG, and uh, VW, the Gap, don't know what they are. Nokia, there you go. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, gone. Nothing for 2015. <laughs> so, <laughs> nothing. So, they're finished. Uh, Firefox, lost his little spark in his tail. M and M's is that M and M's and uh, Pepsi? Google, be a funny one. Yeah, fat ass. Pepsi, Pepsi's got the 2015 logo with a fat boy bending over. <laughs> so that's all good. So yeah, so um, yeah, Trying thanks. Trying to dude. pick up a can. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, we'll get we'll get back to we we can't neglect the audio listeners. So um, all right, so we'll go back get back on track with some stories. Now, did any uh, Eric? Did you have a story you want to um? Dive I might. To? You might have. What do you think? Shall I? You should, You can pick one of <clears throat> your favourites. I'll, I'll pick. Uh, the Wall Street Journal says that Apple is testing several HD TV designs with Asian manufacturers. Mm. The, app, the Wall Street Journal on Wednesday became the latest publication to chime in on the much-rumoured Apple television, saying the company's most recent efforts have focused on a col- collaboration with struggling Japanese Electronics make a sharp, so they'll just buy sharp, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, after all this. Well, I'll tell you a story uh, about sharp. They make good panels. You want to hear a Have story? You? Good stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you after you finish. You can, yeah, you wait your turn. <laughs> according to the journal, uh, according to the journal supply chain sources, see, here we go again with the sources. Oh, tell you, tell you. Apple has been testing a few designs for a large format HD TV, though the publication warns that the Cupertino, California company may not actually build the device. Right. Okay, so it's rumour at this stage. But the rumours are now starting to gather some force. So let's wait and see, shall we? Well, it was always a bit of a bit of a pipe dream of Jobsy, wasn't it? Like he always had that TV. It's been in his background bubbling away for, for a while, for quite yep. some time. Yep. And, uh, and I suppose now, you know, like you've got stories coming out with – you know, even in Australia, the Android's overtaken iOS and 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 all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I suppose they need the next big thing. They they need yeah. they need to. Yeah, um, but that, look, those fig. Just <coughs> my view is this: just because it outsells something, it doesn't mean it's better. Oh no, 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 that's uh, right. Ford outsells BMW too, mate. But I know what I'd rather drive. Well, yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Now, also, now leading into another story that you've got there, and you were talking about um, uh, the Apple. Um, and it it's, it's looks like it's coming back to America, coming back to U.S. shores. Made in America. Yes. According yes. to um, they they bring it back. There we go. Yeah, I'll do <laughs> me with you too. Um, <laughs> New York Silicon Corridor fuels more Apple made in USA rumors. Apple says it plans to make Macs in the U.S. next year, spurring speculation about chip companies setting up shop here to make Apple Silicon. Yes, so uh, New York State has emerged as the chip making hotspot, not hot enough to fuel the latest speculation. Blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, so look, they've been talking about this for a while because they're getting a lot of heat mm. for making it in China. Not because they're making it in China; they're getting a lot of heat because they can't control how the workers are treated in China. Yeah, and yep. um, 
you know, they're getting a bit of heat about that. But expect your products to go up in price if they make them in America. Well, because wage costs are higher. Well, apparently, uh, Cook in this article that I that I saw. Cook didn't say which lines will be moved back to the US or where the new production facilities will be hosted, but he said that Apple's US-based operations will involve more than just fi- more than just final Mac assembly, and that the shift back to the US will will run Apple a hundred million dollars. And I think that's it w- nothing. That's spare change. They've oh, got, yeah, got hundred billion in the bank. That's nothing. That's that's one day's pay. So interesting how he said that it's more than just a final Mac assembly because a little while ago when Jobs was on the planet, uh, he apparently said to Barack Obama that the iPhone, iPad will never, ever, ever be made on American soil. So for whatever reasons he had been saying that, uh, probably the cost. Probably because he had margins. Look, Look, they might increase slightly in price, but at the same time, Apple will take a hit on their margins if they want to be able to sell them because you can't... um, just increase your price exponentially because you want to keep your forty because they, their margins are forty percent at the moment. Mm, and um, you know if they're made in America and you still want your margins to be forty percent, your iPhone's going to go from you know thousand dollars to fourteen hundred or thirteen hundred, and no one's going to buy it. So they're going to have to take a little bit of a hit on their um, on their margins, but they'll more than they should more than make up for it in volume. Well, I think also that yeah, yeah you don't agree, Will. I was going to say it's a bit of a weird situation. It can work the other way too. Like, uh, as an example, Century batteries, you know, been Australian made for you know hundred odd years. That's why they're called Century, and they've still got made in Australia, written on the batteries. Well, at least the stickers made in Australia. The batteries are made over in Thailand. They're shipped over. The Australian made stickers go on them, and they charge more for them now than they did when they were actually made in Australia. So. Yeah, right. The profits have gone up. <laughs> the profits have probably doubled now because they're not making them in Australia and they put their prices up. Mm. But yeah, so. yeah, they put their price up because they go, well, it's made in Australia, so of course it's going to cost more. But, but that's very sneaky that only a certain part of it is made in Australia. Yeah, it's the stickers really that say made in, made in Australia are made in Australia. Mm. <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> highly that's highly illegal. But, but, so, but talking I to, thought... to do that. One of the advantages of this Apple um, thing is that, if not initially, but the long-term plan is for the factory to be mostly, or if not 100%, kind of robotic. So why would the cost be any more when robots mm. are doing all the work? Well, you still got to hire engineers, mate. They just don't sit there and, and fix themselves. Yeah, uh, engineers yeah, cost two hundred and fifty. Engineers cost two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. They hire them from the good, China anyway, but it's good, not even that. It's, it's that's the cost of all the materials and everything is still dearer regardless of... of well, they've got to buy real estate. Real estate's very expensive compared real to Real estate, um, mm. power, Rents. you know, all Rents, that. power, electricity. Yeah. Look, yeah. Unless you're running the 42 gigawatt solar station. Look, at the end of the day, I think what will probably happen is, yeah, they might take a small hit on their margins, but also they're not going to take it laying down. And they'll, they'll probably just, just squeeze, you know, squeeze more out of, out of the materials. You know, like they're all made yeah, over in they'll, China. Yeah, they'll, they'll be very, they'll just be very efficient, mm. as as efficient as they can be. So they're going to put it but all. I think too. They're going to put it all. I was to, so, yeah, sorry, sorry, well, Glenn, you go. Okay. <laughs> I was just going to say they're going to put it all together, right? They're going to say they're going to assemble it in the US, but they're going to squeeze the the guts out of say the screens and the poor little Chinese. They're probably going to take pay cuts and, and living standard cuts to make that's these possible. screens cheaper. That's possible. That's possible. I'll say. And Apple. Yeah, that's right. That's and, possible. They might be, if they make it in China, the screen might be costing them ten dollars, but if they start making it in America, they might say, "Look, we're only going to pay you nine. Yeah, and and then yeah. you know, and then it's not Apple's problem when the when the people jump off the building. We'll pay we'll pay nine dollars a screen, but we'll double our order. Yeah, you know, so exactly. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But anyway, the, the but it's not only that too. I think Apple it'll give in some respects. It's not necessarily a bad thing because it will give Apple its niche market sort of feel back, if that makes any it'll sense. It back. Like, yeah, it'll give the it'll give it its its um because you know until they started making China, I think in the early nineties or mid nineties, everything was made in California, and that gave yeah. them a lot of cred. And so they yeah. get a lot of that. Now they just put designed in California. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Look, I'm all for, yeah, why not? Get out of China. I'm all for it. It'll probably cost a little bit more. But if we can if you can absorb it and it's not going to cost like too much more, yeah. Well, got to remember not? too that the quality, it's going to be easy for them to keep a grip on the quality control if it's made locally. Well, yeah. you would yeah, they think won't have, anyway. They won't um, have camera lenses bouncing around inside cases and things like but that. Then the, the, yeah, so there's going to be there's going to be thing, you know, glue that's still not stuck on the screen. So the screen's still a bit yellow for a few days and... You know this sort of stuff, but you know which happens. That happens very rarely, but 
it'll happen even less so, mm. I think, if they get their quality control light right when they're in the stun locally. Now, but also, like, do you think that is, is Apple? Are they growing a soul or a conscience about anything? Do you think that they might be <laughs> Don't going be stupid? Well, well, <laughs> you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But there's a quote. The no. quote, <laughs> the quote from Tim. Business, Cook. business is business, mate. The, the quote from Tim Cook was, I don't think we have a responsibility to create uh, a certain kind of job, but I think we do have a responsibility to create jobs. So that's, that's very yes. patriotic, yeah. you know, stand up and... and you know uh, what everyone's forgotten stuff. to mention here? He could have been given, he could have got a tap on the shoulder from the old Barack Obama and said, hey, uh, Timmy baby, um, what if you bring it back to the US and we'll give you some subsidy, some government subsidy, we'll just throw money, uh, you have more debt for the US. Apple will make squillions of dollars in the debt and the US will go another trillion dollars in debt. <laughs> That's right. So who knows if they're getting subsidies to come back. That's yeah. you know, we'll never we might we might never know that. No, no, probably you're probably right. That's probably how it will go. Well well um we're talking of Apple and, and getting things sorted out. Um we got uh, we got Mark on the line. So we'll we'll go we'll go on and have a chat to Mark. I'm gonna stop that one because Mark came on and you guys on the video uh, you're probably not going to hear him. Sorry. So uh, now I'm going to start. In, 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 me, me. <laughs> so I'm going to start another. I'll go save. I'll start another track. Because those of you guys were in the lounge, you would have heard Mark before. So I'm not going to play him again. I couldn't handle it. Once is enough. So people watching on YouTube, uh, <laughs> go and get it from the uh, podcast, the audio podcast from yeah. the iTunes. If I, if I feel nice and generous. Uh, you won't be hearing. You might me. squeeze it in. Yeah, you won't be hearing this conversation. You'll just get it. So we'll see how we go. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. Unless you forget, in which case you'll be hearing this conversation. In which case, send Glenn an email and remind him to. Uh, put it Glenn in. at AussieTechheads.com.au. Uh, subject line: You lazy bastard. That's right. <laughs> what are you doing in bed? All right. Now, uh, so, so a bit. I think you missed Mark's thing, Eric. But he was just saying he put an SSD into a MacBook Pro. I think he's got it into his MacBook. Yeah, um, I've been tempted to do that as well, but geez, they're still they're still pretty pricey. Yeah, so he's done that. He's he's found a bit of a price a, a speed increase, and he bought some Thunderbolt cabling. Uh, yes, or Lund lightning cables or something. What was he saying? Lightning? I forget. Thunderbolt. I think was it? Which, Thunderbolt. For the, yeah. Thunderbolt. Well, lightning is for the phones. Yeah, so he bought some Thunderbolts. He said they got really really hot and like enough to actually scorch you with. So that's what beautiful. He, that's what he was on about. Okay, so um, okay, so blah blah blah. All right, I'm gonna. You keep talking, and I'm gonna get a quote on some SSD drives here. All right. Um, yeah, so Eric, Eric's gonna get a quote on some of those uh, SSD drives and let us know. Uh, but while he's doing that, uh, Will, we haven't heard from Let's you. Come down a bit. Oh, hang on. What, what do you got? Yes. What do you got there, Eric? Hang on, Will. We'll, we'll... What have I got? Look, this is from MacSales.com, and they ship to Australia. These like, I bought. I've bought uh, stuff from these guys before. And on their website, you, t you, you can click in, you know, well, this is the sort of uh, Mac Mac I've got. Um, and they'll tell you, you know, this is the RAM model you should get. This is the high drive, blah, blah, blah. So the, the, their own brand solid state drives, uh, 60 gigs for $78, 120 gigs for $130. This is all US dollars, mind you. Uh, 240 gigs for $229, which is not too bad. Well, and 400 80 gigs for $528 uh, with shipping, uh, with the Australian dollar the way it is, that's probably about $520 plus shipping of about 10 bucks. It's about $530 for 480 gigs. It's not bad. Mm, well, I just um, upgraded all my stuff and part of that was an SSD and I bought a Samsung 128 gigabyte SSD and that was uh, 135 Yeah, it's about right. It's about right. It's about yeah. line ball because this one here is 120 is 130 well, let me tell you the yep. prices here on the eastern seaboard. Now, we've got, when I bought mine, I bought mine, uh, looked at, you can... Is it still in the box? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had it? Two weeks? No, only, Two about, weeks? only about a week. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's going into Seven days to go. <laughs> yeah. You can't open it for seven days, Glenn. You'd break your record. Maybe <laughs> after Christmas. I've still got a computer in the, in the cupboard that I haven't even put together, and it's now two years oh. old. It's two it's years obsolete. old. Obsolete. I know. I know. It's obsolete. I know. It'll still do the what what I originally uh, bought it for. It'll still do the purpose. Yeah, I know what you bought it for. You bought it to sit in the cupboard. Of course, it's going to still do that. That's right. <laughs> I had to have something fill that jaw. Now, um, I went down to buy an SSD, and you know, you've got your Intel, you've got your Kingston's, you've got your. Who, where, what side are you looking at here, mate? 
msy.com.au. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, under, okay, go on. So under the price list. In, Intel are the most expensive. Well, you have a look here. No? So, no. So they're, 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 they're comparable. The, in, Intel do, like, they all do different levels. The high-end Intel stuff is quite expensive, but, yeah. So, okay, so 240 gig, uh, 185, uh, is that? 185? So what did you say your 240 was, Eric? Have you still got that? About 230. Yeah, so a little, little bit of difference. So um, I bought the 120 gig for 97. I thought that would not fit oh. nicely. 97 bucks. Should have, should, have, should, have, should have got a bigger one, mate. Well, I didn't want a bigger one. So yeah, uh, probably because you're going to put yours in your laptop. Is that right? Yeah. And yep. Mark did the same. But mine's going in a desktop. So I just want a, a smallish drive just to take the OS and then maybe a little bit of uh, breathing space. And then everything else I just put onto another a, a normal drive. So right. I just want the OS to go a bit faster and maybe even when I, you know, encode the video, I just want that to go a bit faster. But I'm, I'm going to run two drives, the SSD and, as the primary operating drive and then send all the data and that to drive D or something. But, um, but have a look. MSY, they're, they're pretty good, aren't they? They're, they're around, around Australia, I think. I'm not sure if they're in the... In oh, well, they, they deliver, they deliver well, Australia-wide, so that's cool. They're in... Uh, can we see if they're in Perth? They are in Western Australia, in Balcatta and... Cannington, near you, Shane. That's this is not bad. Two hundred and forty gig Intel SSD, one hundred and eighty-five dollars. Yeah, no, that's what I said. That's good. They're good. That's a two and a half. Yeah, that's a lap. That's an internal two and a half. Yes. So it's a lap, laptop size. Yeah. Well, I think not once bad. you once you, you what you do if you've got a Mac, you go and uh, grab as much info as you can from that Mac site to determine <laughs> what sort of you know brand even that you, that you could go and then just go and jump onto this one of these sites another good site for cheap stuff is umart.com.au now they're very comparable to msy uh umart's around the, around the place as well so um yeah jump in go for your life now will what do you think about ssds you got a, an opinion um i think they're still too expensive for what they are but they are going to replace spinning discs uh partly because um, neodymium magnets are becoming so expensive and they're a critical part in a spinning disc. So solid state drives, they will come down, they will become commonplace. Uh, and I think, look, for the average average person, no point. Um, to be yeah, honest, the person you, that yeah. writes occasional letter, email, whatever, they don't really need it. But no. If you're doing but um, if you processor do, extensive data yeah. applications, you, you yeah, if, probably would. Yeah, uh, video editing, photo editing, uh, high-def high, high def video recording, because uh, even recording in 720p uh, is getting towards the limits of a standard 7200 spinning drive. Um, so... It, Yes, there are definitely applications for it, and because they are specific applications at this point, but people will pay, you know, the the premium to to do it better. Um, but you know, sizes will will increase, price will decrease. They'll become commonplace uh. in much the same way that, you know, I mean, think go back ten years ago, and we're, you know, saying that, you know, eight fifty megahertz computers with uh, two gig, two gigabyte you know, hard drives and, <laughs> yeah. you know, so... Yeah, look, I remember... Well, yes, yes, yes. I, I yes, remember when good. they first come out, you know, and... Uh, and they oh, did, they were expensive as. Yeah, they were, and they had read-write issues, you know. Um, they weren't read-writing. You had, they had a smaller... And you couldn't, you couldn't wipe them, and, they, and after a while it uses the space and it just becomes corrupt, and before you know it, you've got one gigabyte but, left, yeah. But you know but what? They don't, they don't have that problem anymore. 120 gig, $97... I've got no issue. I think, you know, yeah. who cares? You know, it doesn't matter. There's an Intel one here I've just discovered. Intel one from the same place, MacSales.com. 480 gigabyte Intel mm. uh, for $530. Yeah, with, a right. five year, with a five year Intel warranty. And yeah. it reads, get this, at six gigabits per second. Mm. But that warranty would be uh, Intel. It's not. Doesn't matter where you buy. I think Intel. They're pretty good with their warranty. I've used the warranty on Intel. Oh yeah, they're good. Five they years. Are. You send it back to Intel. Bang. Yep. You All can done. even you can even jump up on your on your web page and you can type the serial number in and it'll tell you if it's in warranty. So it's very good. Yeah. And then you just post it into them. They post a new one or a, or a reconditioned one back. Easy as. So that, they're pretty good. I I do like Intel. I do like Intel. Uh, Western Digital. They got the same deal with the warranty. Similar sort of deal. Um, yeah. Haven't, yeah. Haven't sort of ventured to the other 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 mobs. You know the Fujitsu. Oh, Fujitsu I found it. My Western. 
my OS and digital the drives used to crash all the time. Mm. What what have you got, Shane, in your new or oh, your new system? Tell us about your new system. Uh, yeah, I've got that. Well, the SSDs of Samsung. They originally quoted me on. Um, I think it was a CZ something or ICZ, and um, because they've been mucking me around a bit, they said, "All right, we'll upgrade you to the Samsung." You know, at the same price. Um, but everything else I've got, I've got the Intel i7 3770. Um, I've got 16 gig of RAM, a um, couple of Firewire cards for cameras and whatnot. Um, I've kept the 250 gig uh, spinning hard drive that I had. Yep. New power supply. I've kept the video card that I had. I have had an old 5770 just so I can run the three monitors. Um, but yeah, no, I've. Um, I mean, before I bought it, everyone sort of said SSDs, you know, they're fantastic. They get things done before you even hit the enter button. And I mean, I've noticed a <laughs> difference, but um, yeah. no, I'm not really blown away by it. Oh, well, if you did a window... What I is think it? you, if you replaced your hard drive and everything was SSD, you'd notice it. Yeah. If you, if you looked at... If you did a Windows, which you probably couldn't because of the new machine, but you know how they have the Windows um, Appreciation Index or some. Crap. Some index. Oh, yeah, I did one of them. Yeah, seven point four out of everything yeah, so else was seven point nine. Yeah, um, but the lowest thing was seven point four. And what was that? Video. Uh, I think it might have been video card. Video yeah, card. 3D yeah. Stuff. So because yeah. your hard drive, if it was a, if it was a cylindrical thing, that would have been that would have dragged it down as well. So now you're you're pumping up in the in the high the high digits, high single digits. Now while while we've got you there, Shane, you've got a one here. Uh, it's that time of the year again when everyone starts. You know, wondering, oh, well, what was the most searched for item and all this sort of stuff. So well, we've got a little pre, a pre-New Year list going just to just to give you an idea what everyone's doing. And Shane's compiled or, or grabbed one of these lists from uh, somewhere, Facebook. Facebook reveals yeah. Australia's favourite places to check in. Where, where, where's the favourite place? Give us the first maybe three of each. each Hang section. on, just, let's clarify. Top, Australian, top 10 Australian check-ins. When you're checking in with Facebook, yes, 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 not checking not in with anything else, you know, with Foursquare or Twitter or anywhere else. Yeah, so this or, this yeah, will just be something that's more popular. Top ten of Facebook Australian check-ins. Yes, Shane. Yes. Number well, so, number number three. All right, so number three is ANZ Stadium. Now that'd be Sydney. I don't think yeah. it's, yes. I don't think it's called ANZ Stadium up here anymore, is it? Didn't they? I think they might have ditched that when the Broncos left. But anyway, yep, number Maybe. number two. Uh, number two, Darling Harbour, so another one for Sydney. And, yeah. and big drum roll, number one, Melbourne Cricket Ground. Oh, yeah. That... Not, much, not, much, not much going on in Brisbane and Perth there, fellas, <laughs> in Queensland. We've got Rod What's Laver, Rod Day Beach, Sydney yeah. Opera House, Chadstone, Chadstone Shopping Centre. Yeah, that's in Melbourne. <laughs> oh, let's just... oh, Suncorp, number nine. Suncorp, got to mention. Oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, top ten overall topics, number three. Is The Voice, the TV show. Number two. Uh, Big Brother, the oh TV God. show. Number one. And <laughs> One Direction, the made-up boy band. How can you... Right, okay. As discussed. How do they know what you're discussing? Is it just like a word count or something? Who knows? And uh, the top... No, they got their algorithms. Yeah, well, the others in that list. The London 2012 Olympics, Hunger Games, Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> Sydney Swans, The Avengers, The Avengers, Gangnam Style. Oh, that's nearly had a billion hits. Have you seen that? Nearly a billion. Yeah, it's number nine. Yeah, yeah how, how does that work out? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's YouTube's probably, well, it has to be YouTube's most successful or most popular thing. It's nearly up to a billion. Can you count them? It's a billion. There's so many numbers. Go and have a look at it. Take it over a billion. Well, only, look at put it this way. There's only six billion people on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> not everyone's got the internet. Oh, but then and not again, everyone's got the internet. But then that's my, right. my little girl just watches it about six times a day, so <laughs> she's she, well, that's tr- probably true. She she's got about um probably about three hundred of those views. Now, uh, top ten <laughs> songs I oh, listen to by Australian Facebook users via Spotify. Oh, don't we all love Spotify? Do you have Spotify, Eric? Yeah, I do. Don't use it. Yeah, love it, um, <laughs> Eric. I mean, uh, Shane, <laughs> do you have it? Do you have Spotify, Shane? Do you use the Spotify? And now I've, the closest thing I've got is a, a last FM account that I had to create as part of my uni thing, but I uh, don't use that either. Oh, yeah. he's got an AM. He's got a sort of portable AM radio that he takes to the cricket with him. Yeah. <laughs> so, as as said by one Australian person that wears a wears a big hat, do yourself a favour. Spotify dot com dot au. Now, number three, top ten song number three. Payphone by Maroon Five. Yeah, not bad. Number two. 
Call Me Baby by Carly Rae Jepsen. Jepsen. And number one, brrr, ding. Skinny Love <laughs> by Bon Iver. Bon Iver, and never I'm heard that, of him. <laughs> I'm that old, I haven't heard any of these. Oh, not, even the rest, not even the rest of the top ten. Oh, no, on number four, uh, somebody I used to know, yeah, heard that. that was, that's been smashed into my head everywhere. Uh, oh, yeah, number five, We Are Young. Hate that, that was, song. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Hate that song. Not a fan. Uh, yeah, oh, we forgot. We should have had. Hang on. Where are we going here? Hang on. No, number one is... Skinny yeah. Love by Bon Iver. Yeah. There you Ooh, go. That's uh, Bon Jovi's cousin. Now, whistle, <laughs> whistle, whistle, don't know, some nights, don't know. Oh, fun. They were good. I saw them on the uh, Graham Norton show. They were good. Now, one more night. Oh, yeah. Maroon 5 again. Geez, two songs. Starships and Little Talks. Yeah, we're good on them. Good, good, good on them. Now, you the, might um, have... You might the have, one I was going to say that's missing out of that is um, Gangnam Style. I thought that would have been in the top ten of songs as well. Yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, but that's for the year. Gangnam Style yeah. came out late in the year, so maybe that's yeah. why. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pushing up there. Now, you might you might have heard a bit of silence coming from Ipswich, and that's because Will, I think Will, the rest of his computer's caught on fire, and he won't I be. I think his house is on fire, <laughs> and, he's calling the, and he's calling the fire engines. He, the unfortunately, moment. Will is He's actually cooking, he's cooking his eggs over his computer. <laughs> that's right. He, it was all that talk about um, <laughs> hot thunderbolt leads and everything. The computer just gone, ah, oh, stuff it. <laughs> that's now, it. I'm going to get you. Yeah, so now, uh, yeah, so Will, unfortunately, won't be back for the rest of the show. So let's hope his computer hasn't fried itself stupid. Now, uh, look, I've better get you into some Microsoft news. Uh, Microsoft fixes the Surface Wi-Fi issues with the latest update of Patch Tuesday. There's, uh, there's a few Patch tu- Tuesday bundle things coming out, so you update your computer, make sure it's all up to date. And you should only update your PC from the Windows Shield. So sometimes uh, that's how... You know, oh, you know what happened to me today? What's today? Thursday, right? If it's I'm a working problem, here. Of I've, I'm at home. Yep. I've logged. I've logged into the into my office, and uh, and obviously the you know, the computers at the office are lo- logged into a server, right? So I'm working away there and blah blah blah. Everything's going fine, and suddenly the program I'm using, the the you know the software that I use for my business, just freezes. I'm thinking, oh that's weird. I just shut it down and restart it. Yep. And I go and it wouldn't go. It wouldn't start. And I think, oh what's going on here? And I always check whether the the network drives are suddenly fallen off the, mm. you know? Yep. And suddenly the network, I couldn't connect to the network or the network drive, you know, like the shared, you know, the map drives and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> couldn't get into it. The server had restarted itself after an update oh. on a Thursday. <laughs> Well, you, you believe that? Well, you know what? Because that was, that was a little perplexing for myself as well. Because I came out this morning and the computer was sitting in the in the reboot mode. You know, like you know, yeah, at, right. at your log on screen. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this little this little mongrel's rebooted. I'm sure. Same that, with me. Yeah. Mine had rebooted over, and I thought, hang on a minute, I didn't do this. No, that's right. And, uh, but yeah, but it decided to defer that for a few hours and <laughs> reboot my server at about lunchtime today. Well, anyway, well, the, the patch Tuesday is out, and uh, that's, as I was saying, look, a lot of spyware comes through to people by uh, looks like an update in the in the bottom. It looks like the balloon opens and says you've got an update from Microsoft, but it's a virus. So if you th- if you get the balloon and you're not sure if it is or not, all you do is you should have that little yellow shield. Make sure it's a yellow shield, or even better still, better still, is go into the start menu, Windows update, and go from there, and then you'll know if it's fair income or not. Now, uh, Wi-Fi issues. Surface apparently had some Wi-Fi issues, which have now been fixed. Seven bulletins this month, five of which are rated as critical, so do your updates. The patches include updates for IE, Word, and... uh, Excuse me, several for the RT and the Surface address security issues uh, around the mobile, blah, 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 and it just goes, it goes crackety, crackety, crap, and on. Now, Surface, talking while we're talking about Surface, Surface is, Microsoft, I think, has finally done the right thing, seen the light, whatever you want to say. Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi will start retailing the Surface this Friday. So before, you could only get it through the Microsoft pop-up stores or pop-in stores, whatever they have to want to call themselves, and or online. But now they've seen the error of their ways because they need to get these things sold. They made bloody, what they make, three million of them or something. So obviously they've got to get them sold. Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi will begin retailing the Service RT Friday. That's tomorrow, almost two months after the tablet became available solely through the blah, blah, blah. We said that. The Service Oh, R- my God. The, the 32 gig model 559. What? 
Well, it's just taken so long to get it to the stores. What's going on? I know. But, well, they didn't want to do it that way. That, their, their model was not to do it this way. But they've obviously... Yeah. I reckon, we've, seen how, we've seen how well that works. Well, I think... Because it was, it was contentious, too, because the, the partners... And, and still a little bit contentious, contentious because the, the Microsoft partners, which are all the resellers, well, they want to get their hands on some new, 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 new bit of kit because it's exactly. going to make some money. But, um, yeah. Yeah, but they, they held it back. And now it's at, at the moment JB and Harvey, so everyone else is still, you know, probably struggling a bit there. But uh, 32 gig, um, what was I saying? 559 and 679, 64. Uh, how does that work? 16 gig for five. I can't even read that. Yeah, it's pretty moment. pricey. 64 gig for 789. Look, I've got a screenshot there of the prices. I just, it got me text mixed up. Uh, it'll also do the cover, and Microsoft indicated it will go the same route and retail the product directly. Uh, this, and this is they're talking about their professional version of the Windows touchscreen laptop thing when it comes out next in January. I think this is going to be a disaster. What the uh, Surface Pro? It's not going to sell. Yeah. Depends what it can disaster. do. I th- I'd be that's dear, very expensive. Um, it's too 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 expensive. Look, I was thinking that. How do you reckon much, that um, price Windows goes laptop. Go in general? How do we what? How do I don't we, think very well. What's that? The surface. Windows tablets in general, whether it be the Surface or anyone else's, do you reckon oh, look, as a collective they'll go right? Yeah, oh, look, I like them. I like them. I think they're good. I think I was only thinking today that it, well, I don't know if I'd spend a thousand bucks. You on it. love them. <laughs> I don't know if I'd spend a thousand bucks on it, but but then again, no. if it's going to be a laptop replacement, maybe I would. Maybe I would. But, but it never. But it will. But it never will be. Yeah. I just, you know, because you need the screen real estate. You know, you need the better graphics on a laptop that you that you know. The should, hard drive probably space. Pretty good. You need the hard drive space. It's never going to be a laptop replacement unless they can throw in a five hundred gigabyte freaking drive in there. Mm. Yeah, well, that's that's also touchscreen. I'm telling you, like I said last week, if Apple brings out an, an a MacBook Air size device, that when you shut it down, it's as thin as a pencil, which it is, but it's a touchscreen. You know, on the other side. Yeah. It'll wipe. Microsoft might as well just pack it up if they do that. Because Apple will just eat them, eat their lunch. Yeah, but look, I, I still think that the, the the thing Windows has got is that it's got the operating system. It's it's, it's in, in what ninety percent of the computers. Like, although yeah, Apple will be say they make this thin little tablet folded up and blah blah blah. Yeah, it'd be great. But that's if you're living in the in the the Mac OS world, OS X world. Yeah. But nothing wrong with that. But I don't really live in that world. <laughs> Live, you should live in that world. I, I live in the Windows world, and um, leave the dark side. No, Join us. No, I can't because there's Join not, us. There's not enough. St- you can't. I can't put another hard drive in me Mac Mini. I can put a hard drive in me bloody PC. I think you can. Well, you can't put another hard drive, but you can make it bigger. Yeah, well, I, want, well, I want to put three in, but you can't. <laughs> well, but, you, why do you want to put three hard drives in? I don't want to put three so you can in. Write it. That's right. Well, me, me coffee doesn't sit high enough on the desk. <laughs> anyway. Lord. Now, uh, talking of Apple, what has come back for Apple? Apple, uh, well, they've, they've, everyone's heard of Apple Maps. And guess what? Eric, I think you might have had this little story as well. The, the Google Maps. The Google Maps, yes. Don't like it. I downloaded it, had a look. I don't like it. I downloaded it. It's pretty, po- it's pretty uh, did you download it? What do you think? Well, I couldn't actually get navigation to work. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, it's, it's a bit tricky. I don't know. But I don't like it. No, I don't like it at all. Uh, Compa- look, compared to their last, when when you know when they replaced um, the you know the original iPhone Google Maps, mm. much better mm. than the current one. Well, j- just on the service, I did download it, and look, I, I couldn't because it said it had uh, turn by turn instruction. I went, oh beauty! I'll just I want to rate this against what I've been using, and I couldn't find out how to navigate. I, I found I could, uh, yeah. you know, find the addresses and all that, but I just couldn't find out how to navigate. Well, that's so, typical Google. Google's never been user friendly. No, so but look, what I, I do can tell you is, I and there's know, no street view. There's no street view like the old there's one. A, there's supposed to be. Yeah, well, they're all oh, I couldn't. I couldn't well, work out how to do it. Well, this uh, I know. Well, then this is this is how the story goes. The Google Maps is available through iTunes for free now. It offers functions as search, as search, turn by turn navigation, direction, street view, and imagery. It's public transport. Transport feature is not available in Australia. People around the world have been asking for Google Maps on the iPhone. Uh, starting today, we're pleased to announce that Google Maps is here, said Google in a statement. So it's being designed from the ground up uh, to combine the comprehensiveness and accuracy of Google Maps with an interface that makes finding what you're looking for faster and easier. 
So it may well do that, but I just could, I couldn't get it going. But I'll tell you what has impressed me, and I know you're going to say, you know, oh, the, well, the Apple Maps, you know, people, what was that that story that came out through the week? The police got on, the Victorian police got onto the onto the, onto the idiot box and said, uh, motorists, warning motorists against using software, the Apple Maps, after two people searching for the city of Mildura got lost in the wilderness. So, yeah, so, <laughs> tourists. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, ever since I think you might have alerted us to it last week or the week before, the actual street name, turn by turn street name on Apple Maps, I have, I yes. love it. I, I have not good, stopped it? using it. I love it getting street names. Yeah, it's names. not bad. It sucks your data though. As long as you've got it plugged in, to, not sucks your data, sucks your battery. As long as you've got it plugged into your car and you're using it, you'll be fine. Well, but uh, during the week, Glenn, there's been an update just for the, just the, on a side, which I forgot to mention. You know that um, find my phone. Oh thing yeah, on Apple, right? Yes, yeah. Do you use? Have you used that at all? I've got it switched on or, or right. lo- loaded. Right. So you can. So if you don't, you say so if you you you've logged in and and work and so oh, there's my phone there. I can see it works. You've done that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Well, the new one, the new if you've updated it, is that if you've lost your phone, just saying you've got an iPad or another phone. Yeah. You log in to find my phone. And it'll, it shows you where the phone is, right? Yeah. But now it's, it's got driving directions to get your phone. Oh, fair income. In Within the Find My Phone thing. So you click driving directions. You yeah. think, right, let's get in the car and get my phone back and it'll tell me where it is. But, but, you, but you're, looking, ha- you're finding my phone on your computer, though. You're in the house. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but your wife might have a phone, <laughs> yeah, I know, for example. Like, yeah, I know. Take your wife's phone yeah, and log good. in through that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Like, and also, it'll tell you where you, you, it tells me where my Mac Mini is and everything. That's good. Yeah, you you load them all. It's all your Mac Minis and all the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. So, there you go. Driving directions to lost phones. And, all, and then that, you find that there's a bloke about you know eight foot tall and four foot wide. He's got it, and you go, oh no, never mind. You can keep it. Never mind. You can have it, mate. I was going to upgrade anyway. Yeah. Well, about a year, <laughs> about a year ago, I had a guy knocking on my door, going, "Have you seen my white iPhone?" And I went, "What?" I went, "No, no, no." He, he comes up. He goes, "Do you live here?" And I went. Well, yes, because at eight o'clock in the morning, yeah, I mean, well, you know, I probably come out in the nude, and so anyway, so I went. Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they all flocked over. No, and so um, <laughs> so yeah, and he goes, "Do you live here?" And I said, "Well, yeah," and he said, uh, "Have you got my iPhone?" And I went, "No," I said, "I don't even have an iPhone," because that's when I had the Samsung. And so anyway, so it was sort of a bit of a, a bit you of say a to me, mate. You lost your iPhone. Do you want my Samsung? <laughs> it was sort of like an awkward bit of a situation, a conversation, and, and so, it so could if, have been. Because see, the thing is, it's not it's not one hundred percent accurate. It could have been any of the three houses around you. Yeah, so that's what happened. He he's he's got his missus sitting in the car doing navigating stuff, and he's he's the heavy coming in the. Well, there's the, your problem right there. Yeah, so he's come in, but yeah, he's he the find my phone obviously pointed to my house, and and then he goes, well, if it's not here, he goes, are you sure? And I'm going, I'm, I'm just, I was just about to, like, getting close to losing me cool, you know. Like, what is he doing? Is he accusing me and all this sort of stuff? So anyway. If he was smart, which obviously he isn't, he would have, he would have, he would have just hung around the area mm. and waited for people to move about. And if the thing started moving, and you think, yeah. oh, well, that car just left and it's moving in the same direction as that car, follow that car. <laughs> That's why he's not a cop. Oh, I tell you. But anyway, I said, look, I, I don't have it. I don't have it, mate. So get out of here. And uh, and he and he, he started going. Oh, do you know the people that live in like number five, such and such a street up the way? And I went, no, no. I, said, I know him. I said, I don't know. And it was just, it's just, uh, just an idiot. Now, obviously, whoever just stole weird. it walked past my place, and uh, and he's probably pinged up. At, got the got this location. The guys walked past, and then he's turned it off, or the battery went flat, yeah. and and yeah. my place was yeah. the last yeah. last signal. Um, shown, but anyway, but I told, he, he nicked off just before he got a punch in the face, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, the good Samaritan, well done. Now, where where else are we going here? Uh, we've done the apple and the thing. Um, all right, what uh, Shane, have you got any more? Did you want to do any more? Oh, uh, we got the um Google Evernote thing, yeah. What's that one about? All right, so Google's launched a drive feature that includes uh. That. I'll try to start that again. Google, Google has launched a drive feature that may indicate that it's ready to challenge Evernote. Uh, in a Google post, the search drive said that they're launching a save to drive extension uh, to its Chrome browser, which I have stumbled across in the last couple of days. The general idea is that you can uh, grab content from around the web and store it um, in this Google Drive thing, 
similar to what you can do with Google Evernote, although um, I believe with Evernote, I don't know if that's a plug-in or a separate thing. Um, Evernote stores uh, notes, pictures and other items to the, to the cloud. And now the drive is offering a clip to the service uh, to go with Google Docs. Google appears to, uh, to be at least pondering a challenge to Evernote and it goes on just to kind of compare the two Sorry. services after that. Yeah, so uh, look, Evernote, I reckon, oh, once again, if you're not using Evernote, do yourself a favour. Go on, go on, grab it. It's, oh, it's great. Like, I use it, um, I've started using it, you know, when you ring up Telstra or you're ringing up somebody and... Yeah, you know, and so I've got Evernote like as a as an icon, so I can quickly access it. You know, opens up, yep. and I just go. I've got a little note there called phone calls or something, whatever. And then I've got starting to get headings. So then when I ring Telstra, I go up I, as I'm talking to them. I can type in the date. I can type in the in the person's name that I'm speaking to and what the conversation is about. And then as, I just use it as my own little log. You know, so yep. so how many times have you get into a situation? They go, "Well, have you tried to ring us before about this, or have you made contact?" And you, and you say, "Yes, look at my notes." I say, "We don't have any notes." Yeah, yeah. liars. Yeah, so I've got I've got a, I've got a case before the ombudsman at the moment, but I can't say it because it's going through the courts. But uh, Oy, <laughs> no, uh... no, it's not. <laughs> just through the ombudsman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, what happened was we we relocated me. Uh, my brother's shop was at uh, Beanley. Now it's down in Kingsliff. Relocated, and Telstra said, "Yeah, don't worry, don't cancel the service. Just relocate it. You better keep the same plan." Anyway, we relocated first. Yeah, bill. that's right. That's F- right. Yeah. First bill came. I've done that. Yeah. First bill came. That's million eight, dollars. Eight hundred dollars. We we changed For plan. What? Oh, because because they've what they 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 cheated as a new connection, very new connection yeah. the whole way, and, and, and pushed us off a plan. So we were, we were getting, for our plan, we, in our bundle, we get like free, we were getting yeah, free SED. internet and free phone calls and everything, yeah. yeah. So now we got started getting charged. And I'm thinking, oh, you're kidding me, aren't you? And then they're just going, well, that's, yeah, we can So what do they say? It, wouldn't it be quite simple to tell them, see my last plan, you've got it in front of you, and they go, yeah. They say, so like, that's the plan I'm supposed to put me back on that. Well, yeah. That plan's been retired. That plan's retired. Actually, that's a good that's a good point, because I'm on a plan like that, and suddenly I've noticed that my bills are going up hmm. because they're not charging me for phone calls. Yeah. Well, you want to ring just, up. And I haven't, and I haven't, because it just goes up you know, incrementally. Of the, oh, yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Before you know it, every, every time you say don't worry about it, it's 10 yeah. bucks. But then you look back over two years and you think, fuck, <laughs> look at my bill. Oh, hang on, just write okay. that one down. Okay, edit. <laughs> Thirty-seven. Okay, uh, I'll be here till one o'clock. Now, <laughs> I might just, I might just pepper the whole podcast with those just to give you a sleepless night. Yeah, good. I'd love it. Yeah. So yeah, that's what they do. Like they, they change the plans around. And I said to the lady, I said, I said, now hang on a second. I said, hang on. I said, you've changed plans on me. I said, aren't I in a contract? Aren't I under a contract? And she goes, yeah. she goes, well, I don't know. I, um, I don't know. I, said, I don't know. I wouldn't be bothered checking. Then she goes, well, you're not now. And I go, well, of course I'm not. Because you've taken well, me Because you took me off it. So, <laughs> so anyway, so I've said, I've, I've requested the voice, the voice uh, tapes. And I've said, you get that voice tape out that, was, that I recorded with you people on the such and such a day when I called up to relocate and cancel that service up there. And you'll hear the term relocation, keep the same plan, get it out. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to town on them. Go on to town. So, oh, no, you've got to. You, you have to. to. You have to. And I'll tell you my story about Sharp too, just quietly, just to self-indulge a bit here, because there was a story about Sharp, wasn't there? Someone was mentioning oh, Apple buying Sharp. Or Apple or Apple invested some money in Sharp. Yeah, our uh, remote for the sh- our Sharp TV broke. I turned it off one night, came to turn the TV on the next day, no good. And it was not the battery. Check the battery and everything like this. So um, so anyway, wife gets on the phone to Sharp. Oh, I've got this broken uh, remote. You know, the TV's only one year old, blah, blah, blah. And the lady goes, oh, yeah, well... Um, yeah, that should be no worries. Just get the send us the receipt, and we'll we'll send a remote out within forty eight hours. So, oh, oh, this sounds a bit too easy, doesn't it? So anyway, yes. <laughs> two weeks later, no remote. They've gone. They've gone. Oh, we they've couldn't. Seen, they've sent you a new TV. Oh, did, did I spend, mention this last week? I don't know. And I no. Like, and and mm-hmm. I and the, and there was I did. I must have mentioned. Yeah, but, um, I, I can't remember. Oh, I must have been the week you were away. 
Oh, I won't bore you anyway. But anyway, but anyway, so it's still going on. Um, they can't read the receipt. We had to do another copy of the receipt. They still can't read it. They got to they got to call JBI Fi to make sure we bought the TV. Um, they told us to get the serial number off the back, and we said, "Well, we got to pay someone to come out to lift it off the wall, you idiots!" Because you put the serial number on the back, you idiots. And so we can't do that. And so we still haven't got a remote. Still can't turn the TV on unless we use the things behind. I can't. Blah, blah, I can't use all the features because of all the features on the remote. So anyway, we're stuffed. So, but all this, all this drama, right? And must all this time wasting, just not on our part, but on their part as well. The remote must cost them twenty bucks, at, at yeah. max, twenty bucks. Must well just just send it out. We've gone through all this drama and all this bad, bad PR and and you know what bad will for twenty bucks. You know, Apple oh. worked that out many many years ago that it is cheaper to just give you or replace the broken item then go through the rigmarole and the staff costs and the admin costs and the product costs and the postage is. costs and the phone call costs of just arguing with you over 20 bucks. I say, yeah, sure, mate. Get one off the shelf. See you later. Of course it is. Of course it is. That's well, why they've got so much money because they don't dick yeah. around with this bureau- bureaucratic processes. Yeah. Well, even in my situation, if someone said to me uh, something like, oh, listen, Glenn, um, that piece of RAM you put in that machine, 20 bucks worth, uh, cause Ram's so cheap. Have you seen the prices of it? It's cheap as chips. Oh yeah. It's, yeah. Twenty. What is it? Twenty bucks for two gig. It's cheap as. So um. It's pretty cheap, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Actually, uh, it's uh. Let me think. It was yeah. We just got some for my brother. Uh, fifty-five dollars for four gigs. Yeah, yeah, that's cheap. Yep. So anyway, but yeah. not, even even myself, as a, just a lowly little bloody you know sole trader or whatever, they said, "Oh, I'm not happy with this RAM because of some bloody problem, or we don't we don't we don't think it's the right color, or whatever, you know, some stupid problem that obviously if I started fighting them, it'd just just drive me insane. You'd just rather go, don't worry about it, mate. Just, just take yeah. it. Get out of my sight, and I take won't. It. And I won't. Yeah. And I, I just will be careful with you next time, and I probably won't deal with yeah. you again. But um, oh, you, you come to me when you need, you need a, you know, problem sorted, and I'll charge you double. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, when he comes back to you, he'll come back to you because he thinks you're such a nice bloke. What he doesn't <laughs> realise is that you're going to take a piece of a uh, piece of his skin off him. Remember, oh, years ago now, if you waited in the line at the ANZ Bank for more than five minutes, you'd get five bucks. You remember that yeah, promo? Yeah. Well, because yeah, <laughs> yeah. back then I worked in the NAB, and, <laughs> and um, so I was on the I was on the counter, you know, doing the doing the the cash, the telling and stuff. And the, this grumpy old bastard comes up, and it was a busy day. It was a busy day, and he was probably waiting there for five minutes or so. Anyway, but he comes up grumpy, you know. They just start off grumpy, and so he comes and he goes, "Been waiting more than five minutes. I want me five bucks. A and Z will give you five bucks. I want me five bucks." And I said, well, I said, well, that's ANZ, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, I want to close my account. And I went, all right, here's your five bucks. Account's closed. See you later. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> and he, he, he got angry. He got the shits with that. And I, cause I, cause I wasn't going to muck around with him. We had a line out the door that here's your five bucks. You can't, I'll, I'll close your account. That's right. Account's you closed. Can't, See you, you can't later. please a grumpy old bastard who's got no right. Yeah. to be that angry if he hasn't waited that long yeah. at the expense of 40 other people. So he, go, he goes, well, and then he goes on and goes, well, what's your name? And I said, well, if you cast your eyes down there, you will be able to read it. <laughs> off the, off the... <laughs> and I'm just saying, uh, have you finished? I said, your account's closed. You've got your $5. Have you finished? And he goes, well, I don't want my account closed. And I went, well, you'll have to go up there to new accounts because I've just closed it upon your request. <laughs> And so I pushed him up to new accounts. He, to, oh, he was there for Jesus. another hour. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See? Yeah. Well, it's just some of these, sometimes you just don't muck around with people. I just, I just, the, the hairs on the back of your neck fling up, you know, and they, they just roll you from the outset. And you, and. Yeah, look, as much as you want to be patient and as much as you think, look, I'll do the right thing and I'll just hear him, hear out his complaint. But then yeah, when no. you've got that combined. With the twenty people That's right. staring at you to hurry the f up, That's right. you think you know what? That's right. I cannot anger twenty mm. people at the because of one sport brat. Mm. And look, look, I wasn't silly. Like, I, I looked up his net worth before I started crapping on, and um, yeah, I looked it up. And he only had twenty bucks or something in his account. Or well, not even. No, I think he, he might have only had. He might have even not even had the five which I gave him. I can't remember. But he had nothing. He had nothing. He, he come out in front. He, he probably did. He probably did. But he had, he had nothing. So I wasn't going to ruin any relationship there. So anyway, oh, jeez. I'm all excited now. <laughs> I felt it over a bit. Oh, settle down. Oh, 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 oh. 
All right. Now, uh, where are we up to now? <laughs> Let's just change the pace, get back into it. All right. How's this one? Oh, how's this one? NRL fans, how you going? You're going to get live match streaming next year on mobiles and tablets. Are we going to get sued for this? No, it's coming from Telstra. Right. Telstra. Oh, so, so obviously, uh, that's why they were... You've got, you've got to try Foxtel on your iPad. Have you done that yet? No. No. I haven't done you that. You've got to do that. You've got to do that. Telstra has signed a five-year di- digital media deal with the ARL Commission. The Telco will acquire exclusive broadcast rights of all NRL matches and exclusive post-game access press conference for mobile and tablet devices. Now, in addition, Telstra will operate the NRL website, related team websites and blah, blah, blah. That's probably pretty much what they do now. Uh, matches live on the mobile phones uh, regardless of the carrier. So, uh, so that's all good. Now, I had to do a bit of digging because I thought, well, hang on a second. Are they going to live stream Channel 9 broadcasts? You know, are they going to stream the Sunday game at 3? And Bet you they don't. No. So I went further into this story uh, for, for you, just for, for the Aussie Tech listeners. Now, five matches per round will be live as per the Foxtel schedule. I would imagine that would be. And three, so they will stream, uh, from what I can gather, alongside stream alongside the nine broadcast on the right. Moment. So they won't be live, but they're streaming alongside. If you know, you understand that? Yes, yeah, sort of. <laughs> Good. Now, my last little piece for the for this week, and um, oh, has anyone else got stuff? I'll just do all my stuff. I don't care. What, what, is there, yeah, go for it. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll finish off with this, and then you guys can uh, finish off if you have to. But Microsoft has... Microsoft scoff. <laughs> <laughs> that puts um, SkyDrive. That's about right. Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> have put the Sky Microsoft. <laughs> SkyDrive app on the Xbox 360. A new SkyDrive app for the 360 allows users to upload content to Microsoft's cloud storage service from PCs and mobile devices and then view it on the game console. The application allows users to view images, videos, documents on the TV that's connected to the little black box. The storage service is also compatible with non-Microsoft products such as iPhones, iPads, as well as smartphones based on Android. So that's uh, handy. There you go. So that's not too bad. A little bit of a Dropbox style, but I have to look into... Uh, SkyDrive had a file size upload limit of 25 megs. So that obviously has changed if you can put videos up there. Because that's a small... Oh, you'd have to, unless it's a, it's a you know, 6 by 4 uh, <laughs> uh, you know. That's right. Not, that's... Not instead of 600, 640 by 320, it's uh, 6 by 3. <laughs> six point six six point four times three point two. That's right, six pixels. So it's a little postage stamp. You're watching on your phone. You're squinting at that screen. Going, oh yeah, that's good. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, see now. Now, uh, Shane, you had you just quickly pulled out a story about uh, roaming. Roaming's in the news again. Why do people roam? I've got no idea. But that, they... uh, yeah, I did. Uh, let me. Oh, don't get me started on this. Go. I know what's to go. 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 But oh, geez, they're dumb. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, all right, so a woman battles um, her telco over a $148,000 global <laughs> roaming fee. How the hell does she do? What did she do? Tell me. Tell me, uh, please. I don't think it actually says. A woman slept with a monster mobile bill uh, of almost 148000 after a European holiday has battled with her telco to what bill. The customer's carrier reduced the uh, 147907 global roaming fee to 1147 so that's a big drop. Um, <laughs> after a nine-week trip, but only after a complaint was uh, lodged with the industry watchdog. Um, it doesn't actually go on to say what she actually did in particular, but it goes on to it does go on to say that um, there. It goes on to say about a self-employed truck driver um, was also forced to close his business after a rejected loan for a vehicle um, repairs because of a incorrect $102 phone bill. BS. Um, yeah. Uh, I, look, I reckon if he had a $102 phone bill and he, he didn't get a, uh, a, a loan because of his uh, because of the phone bill, I, I would suggest that there was more to it than that. <laughs> yeah. You know, look, I know... Um, you can be hard and fast in the branches, you know. You're hard and fast with your, with your, your, your credit and what the rules that you have to abide by. But seriously, if if this guy's got collateral, if he if he's if he's half decent in everything else that he's doing, he's, and he's you know he's got a that's good right. Look, going. and they'll, they'll ignore the phone things. Oh, that's yeah. the wrong. You know, all they'll say is, look, pay that off. We'll give you the money, no problem, because yeah. the rest of your credit rating is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so he's just full so, of shit. Yeah, so I'd say that this truck driver, whoever he is, whoever you are, buddy, I'd say that you just have no money, no collateral. You probably don't even own your truck. Your business is probably that's right. crap. And, that's and you're they probably didn't. dealing in drugs, so they, go away. And they probably just chose that as the excuse to tell you rather than say that's that right. you had nothing going for you. Shit, that's right. <laughs> that's rather than tell you that, hey, buddy, your credit rating is appalling, um, they had to use an excuse, and you gave it to them with a $102 phone bill that you didn't pay. That's right. That's right. So, um, all right, so there you go. And Global roaming fee. I don't understand. This woman must have been on the phone 24-7, to everybody she knew while she was overseas. Yeah, she's probably one of these ugly Australians that, oh, I'm in Rome at the moment. You want to him talk to the pizza guy? You know? <laughs> He's know. making me a gelato. <laughs> you know, mean, ringing uh, up everybody like a freaking bogan. So First time she's been overseas. Go away. So how do you... Um, so when you're, you, you put your SIM, you put a prepaid SIM into your phone, Eric, when you're overseas? Yeah, mate, as soon as, as, soon as I land. Yeah, so that just means people... The airport. You go to the airport. Mm. There are any airport in the world... There are these telecommunications kiosks everywhere, and most of them are in English and the language of the land. But does that stop you? And you go in there, and, I, and, I, and you hold up your phone, iPhone 5, and they go, 5, yep. yes, micro, yes, or mini, yes, yep, nano. what, and then, and then or nano sim, whatever it is, and because you can't, she can't understand, she gets a brochure out and puts it in front, and goes, which one? And all the plans are there, and you look at it and go, and it says there, you know, 20 euros for... You know, 30 days and they get this money. That one. Yeah. That one. And you, you're in and out 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, but th does that prevent people from ringing you, though? Or how do you receive calls if you've got a different... Yeah, but then, but what I do, because look, at the end of the day, if on my work phone, I'll put to my voice message and say that I'm unavailable. Please send me an email. Mm. Right? So that's easy for business, for clients. So that's simple. I go, yeah, sure, no worries. I'll send you an email. For my private phone, I just give, the, when I land, I SMS everyone back home with my new number where they can contact me while I'm away. Yep. You know, my mum, my dad, my brothers, my sisters. Yep. You know? Yep. Yep. So all the important people. Yep. And they're the ones that I, I'm going to contact, right? Oh, and my friends, you know, close friends. I say, here's my number. I'm away. If you need to contact me, here's my number. One SMS, group SMS, cost me 75 cents. Whoop de whoop. Yep. Well, you probably could also, because I've, I've just got into uh, the Skype out with a Skype number. You know, so you could also yep. just forward, just give people your Skype number, the local phone call number, and then you just pay Skype to mobile, which wouldn't be too much, I wouldn't imagine. Um, all right, now, uh, I think Shane, quickly, Shane, you got one more tap and go. We've all said from the start there's going to be fraudulent activity going on here. Uh, yeah, the tap and go thing, I'll probably just paraphrase this. Basically, police have um, warned tap and go, which is the NFC kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit wary of this. Like I'm it. a bit wary of this. I've got one credit card with this tap and go, and I just keep it in my pocket. Yeah. yeah um, basically, they're just saying that it's um, yeah, it's just another way that you can get ripped off. I actually, as part of my uni thing, did a um, a paper, for the want of a better word, um, on the NFC as, as a general thing. And the NFC standard, straight out of the box, doesn't have any security on it. It no. actually relies on you know, Visa and MasterCard and whoever else to actually put their own security mm. wrapper around but what's the what's the range you have to be within the machine for it to actually work you i think you've actually nearly got to touch it or you yeah, might yeah, have you've really to got touch it. it's a couple, a couple of inches isn't it a few yeah, centimeters it's close it's close and and plus it's 100 bucks if if it's a transaction under 100 at all you can tap and go if it's over 100 you've got to um do something else pin or sign that's right. Um, yeah, and what else? But I mean, yeah, you, you see other things that, I mean, when I was doing the research for this paper, there's other gizmos that you can just walk past somebody like a little wand thing and it zaps their, you know, their credit card and takes all the credit card information and all that kind of stuff. So but yeah, is it's it this, not safe. I don't use it. But this guy here, um, I use it. I, I actually don't mind it. But yeah, I use it. Australian, I, but I don't like this. I think the security is a bit lax. But this Australian Bankers Association Chief Executive Stephen Muchenberg says pay pass and pay wave save customers time and remove the need for a card to be handed over to the cashier. Well, you still got to get out of your pocket, you idiot. You're still virtually handing it to them. You just got to hand it halfway. You know, you don't actually have to give, put it in their hand. So that's that's a, what a rubbish response that was. Oh, we're grumpy tonight, aren't we? Now, <laughs> what else have we got going? <laughs> Eric, have you finished? I'm done. You're done. Stick a fork in you. You're done. <laughs>
Thank goodness. All right. Now, oh, so, yeah, so the show went for a little bit longer than normal, so I hope you uh, have stuck around uh, stuck around and enjoyed the extra extra bits, the extra 17 minutes or so. So uh, hopefully you did. Now, you can contact uh, to contact us if you want to send us an email, Glenn, Eric, Will or Shane at AussieTechHeads.com.au. You know, on the Twitter, I'm at Aussie Tech Heads. Eric is Eric Franco, Eric with a K. Shane is Shane 1970... Something. Three. Three, Shane with a Y, Shane 1973. And Will is at Mr. Tompkinson. Uh, you can do everything on the Aussie Tech Heads webpage. You can, you can get the show notes. Garth is coming back, maybe now, not until next year. Um, I hear the head is coming back next year. So next year, there's a, there's a, a few things going on. The paper, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash paper. Uh, you get a paper, digital paper of tech news and other, other little goodies into your iPad each twice a day, each twice a day. Uh, the video of the show can be seen each Friday from Fridays up on the front page, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash. I better make one of those up, shouldn't I? Because at the moment you got a you got a link from the landing page. So I'll do. I'll make a special forward slash podcast up, I think. And uh, if you want news feed in your Twitter, about two little stories every half an hour of what's what's banging around Australia and the world in tech news. Just follow Aussie Tech News, Aussie A U S S I E Tech News. All right, so I think that'll do us for another week. And uh, so hopefully Will's machine hasn't ex- entirely blown up and blown the smithereens and the gut poured have out. You got a, have, have you got a police scanner that you can um, listen in on to see if there's a fire at- <laughs> Up there at old, old Ippy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, is he in the lounge? Did he make it back to the lounge or is he, he just he's stuck his head in the oven? <laughs> Given up. Yeah. I would have thrown his computers in the oven. They're a piece of garbage. What are you doing, Will? Yeah, need need to um sort them out, Will. Well, it must be, but it's pretty hot in Nippy. But anyway, uh, so we'll see you next week, Eric. Have a good week. Yes, and, thank uh, you, sir. So you we'll. Too. So what's that going to be? The twenty, the twentieth. Jeez, the week before Christmas. That'll be our last show before Christmas, I would say. Yeah. So after Christmas, not too sure what's happening the week of Christmas with the show. Um, but maybe the um, world hasn't come to an end by then. Yeah, so maybe... Yeah, we'll, if you believe that, you're a dick. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if the... Um, we'll see what we can do. It probably, it, I can probably guarantee it's not going to be on a Thursday night. That'll be the 27th. It probably won't be the 27th, but if we can round some people up on another day, we could probably do a quick one, or I might just jump on and just do something quick, but there won't be any news anyway. But uh, so there we go. And Shane, have a good week. Don't work too hard. Whatever you do, just... Um, Never do. No. That's good. That's good. All right. So that's it. So thanks once again for tuning in uh, on whether you're watching us from the YouTube video or whether you're downloading us through iTunes and listening to us through the podcast. So I think that's it. So until next week, the week before Christmas, stay good because Santa's got to come and we'll see you then. Bye-bye. See you guys. Yeah.